Welcome. Thank you very much indeed for selecting me. I'm not sure that I deserve this award. Having met Nelson Mandela myself, I thought the least that you could do was go to jail for 25 years. I haven't been to jail for 25 years. Uh, Nelson Mandela uh, arranged for me to go and visit Robben Island to see the conditions in which he had lived for more than a quarter of a century. Uh, you really got to go to Robben Island to see what this man and uh, put up with. And as I told Mr. Mandela, the most remarkable thing about you is that you are not bitter. And uh, he turned to me and said, if I was bitter, I wouldn't be Nelson Mandela. Um, I have a couple of things to do, uh, mainly to educate some of the people. Firstly, I want to say that I have recorded a dozen DVDs and they are here, all, all 12 are here, and I want you to know that these are not for sale, I got plenty of money. All you need to do is to go through these and catch me uh, in the next year or two and, I, and say I want DVD 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or whatever it is or I want the whole daddy lot. Um, they are basically for the younger generation, especially of Tamils, who do not know where the hell Jaffna is, let alone what is going on in it. So, uh, and as I said, these are not for sale. I'm not going to make a fast buck, but I'm trying desperately to see that the younger Tamils know what this fight is all about. The, the next thing I want to do is to very briefly uh, tell you about the new book that I have uh, published, Sri Lanka Sexual Violence of Tamils by the Armed Forces. This is important, this second edition came out last month. This is for the people who say in the past tense what was happened, what has happened to the Tamil people, not what has happened, it is already happening. Right now, as we sit down to dinner, Tamil women are being raped in Kirnoli. It is for them that I have published this book. So, this is published already in Chennai, uh, and if you ask Professor Manivan, he will tell you who published it. Uh, I don't know who the person. There's another one coming up called Struggle for Justice of Tamil People in Sri Lanka. This will be out probably in the next month or two, and that too will be in Chennai. Now, um, there's one other important book which unfortunately is not available. It's called Genocide in Sri Lanka. I didn't write this, but a very close friend of mine did, Winston, Dr. Winston Panchachan, who died a couple of months ago. But I produced most of the discussion on Sri Lanka, and he wrote the rest. And he has got a wonderful page. I'll show it to you, I don't know whether you can see it. If this is not genocide, then what is it? And uh, there are five copies, I have all five of them. The first I gave, uh, the person who introduced me, Usha Skandaraja, greatest Tamil writer, uh, living today uh, in the world. Second was, uh, uh, I gave it to my close friend, the Prime Minister of the Transnational Government, uh, Rudra Kumar, uh, for the enormous work that he had done. The third, The third book is going to the Jaffna Public Library. The fourth book is going to be deposited in my bank after I die to be sent to the public library of Tamililam when it is established in Kirinoli. <laughs> in Lord, I, I didn't say if it is established, when it is established, because it's only a question of time. 
Crack please me one more book and I have great pleasure in presenting this to the one person who deserves it, Professor Manuel. Professor Manuel, he may have left. Yes. He is a man who wrote that magnificent, massive tome. I've never seen a book like I wrote that much. Thank you, MCG. Thank you. And uh, this book, the second version, I couldn't think of anybody who deserved it more than Nimal Vidyagamurti. Where is Nimal? Uh, and that's about it. Uh, just to say that if I am still alive next year, 86, and I might well be dead by next year, uh, I'll be delighted to come, provided you find someone else to introduce me other than Usha, because you talk for half an hour. Thank you very much, Kandri. <laughs> This is Brian Senivartner talking about Winston Panchacharam's book in Charles Darwin University in uh, Darwin in November 2011, that's five years before Panchacharam died. And this is genocide and uh, before I leave I will, after I take questions, present to you, this university, a newly released book of which I have all the copies called Genocide in Sri Lanka. The last one but the last page says if this is not genocide, then what is it? Sri Lankan flag, you know, says it all. I was around when this flag was being designed. The initial flag actually had just the, the lion only. The members of the lion flag, you remember? My great-great-grandfather mated with a, a, who was a lion, mated with the Indian princess. So, uh, we pointed out, you know, but th this is a single lion. What about the Tamils? He said, oh, God, we forgot about them. Well, would a couple of stripes be enough? So, that yellow stripe are the Tamils that you guys here, and that uh, black stripe are the Muslims. The stripes on the Sri Lankan flag are not yellow and black. They are orange and green. Orange for the Tamils and green for the Muslims. My father is what is known as a bullshit artist. And uh, he's been spinning bullshit for a long time. And uh, the Tamil expatriates were taken in by his bullshit for a long time. But then they uh, have woken up to it, or they're waking up to it, as is evidenced by his uh, response to his outrageous performance at the... Uh, Honours Night, or they called it an Honours Night and they called it an Awards Night in Toronto, in Scarborough. Toronto is host to 400,000 Sri Lankan Tamils who escaped the war. And there is a big, or well, there was a big Tamil tiger supporting population there but uh, my father is trying to keep them in the fight
came there was retaliation. On the 29th of April, the Tamil Tigers bombed the oil storage facility in Colombo. That is the expected retaliation. May I point this out to you, that if the Tamil Tigers wanted to do some real damage, they had only three more minutes of flying time because where they dropped the bomb. And if they had spent that three minutes which they could have because the British Signal Army was asleep, they could have dropped that bomb in the middle of the fort and the damage that would have been a hell of a lot more. We're talking in terms of child soldiers. Let me clarify this point to you because the international committee uh, community cannot understand this. If I was a child in Central Line and survived, I would probably have become a child soldier myself and a suicide bomber. The suicide bomber mentality is you kill my father, you raped and kill my mother, you shot my brother and you cut at my sister. I have nothing left. And when I decide to leave this planet, I will bloody well take you with me. You talk of child soldiers. You talk of child soldiers. What did Alan Rock find? The UN investigator into child soldiers. He said the LTTE are conscripting child soldiers. We knew that. What about the Singhala government? The Singhala government is recruiting as many if not more. And today the Kamala section uh, in the East or Pillion or whatever that guy's name is, is recruiting far more. And when at least the LTT recruit them, they give them some training. I have seen the schools in the LTT area, Christian Stucky has documented it. Secondly, there is the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. This was signed in January 2019, promptly signed the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child. Now there are two protocols, additional protocol 1A and additional protocol B. Additional protocol A is the conscription of children for military activities. That was promptly signed by the single government. Optional protocol B is the recruitment of children for child prostitution for sale and for, uh, for, for sale and the use of e tourism. That was not signed by the single government. Why? Because if they sign that, their tourist industry will go for a six. So all this facade, this charade of being interested in children is a load of, if I could use the word that we use in Australia, bullshit. This is the Facebook promo for the TGD's referendum in Tamil. And there's these people who are their supposed speakers. That's my father over there. This is Professor Matt Quattrop. That's Maramo Manivanan. That's Markandu Bignesaran. I don't know who the other two are. But uh, it wasn't much of a success. There wasn't much appeal for the Tamil Tigers or their referendums. This is Usha being handed a copy of my book by my father with Rudra Kumaran applauding. So how many copies of this book are there? And why are they not being sent to the world leaders? But more importantly, why are they not being sent to the ICC prosecutors? Because I think that that's where they should go. I think they need to be investigated by the Sri Lankan police and the Sri Lankan judiciary regarding war crimes.
by the Tamil Tigers. And I know that Brian Senegratna has no right to take control of Winston Panchacharan's photographs. and bury the evidence. That's my father with Usha Shriskanda Raja. My father has been draped with a shawl. This is the Prime Minister in front of the Tamil Tiger flag. This is Rudra Kumaran. And this is Winston Panchacharan's writing. Uh, this is his signature. That's from Usha Sri Skandaraja's uh, publication uh, on Facebook when she was given a copy of the book by my father. And he's written to Usha with sheer admiration and gratitude. Brian, and the date has been changed from the 18th of the 5, uh, 17 to 18, 5, 16. And as you can see, it's not very well written. That's the first page, and that's the second page. So when uh, Usha Sri Kandaraja did this posting in uh, 2016, it was announcing Winston Panchacharan's death. That was on the 20th of November, 2016. But uh, he says, I humbly ask just a few moments of your time and energy to review the evidence we offer. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or need more assistance or other independent evidence from reputable sources at my home phone. And he provides a phone number with hope and expectations respectfully yours. Now, uh, as you can see, it's addressed to Your Excellencies, Global Leaders for the Protection of the Vulnerable and Those Oppressed by Genocidal Acts. And he writes, on behalf of Global Public Opinion. <laughs> What is Global Public Opinion, GPO? The Tamil diaspora and the dying race of the Tamils in Sri Lanka. The Tamils in Sri Lanka are not a dying race. We appeal to your excellencies, global leaders, to quickly, to act quickly and follow through to protect the dying Tamil race of Sri Lanka. Justice delayed is justice buried. Now, what I am concerned about is that my father is burying this evidence. If there were only five copies and he's keeping all the copies within the TGTE, 
I think that this information should go to the authorities, the forensic authorities, to look and examine the photographs. The text is rubbish. It's based on what Brown said at all, Winston Panchajar. But the uh, this is his other book, which I have a copy of. Now uh, it's absolute poison. What my father writes. This is the Yes to Yef referendum. This is the event that my father went over to the USA for, just for that, for the weekend. And as you can see from the TGTE's website, they have flags of all the nations where the TGTE is operating. And the innermost flags. are uh, the Tamil Tiger flags. So their logo is surrounded by two Tamil Tiger flags. So I don't think there's any doubt that Tamil Tigers, the TGTE, is the LTTE in disguise. 